Now, some of you may be surprised to see <clears throat> all the Christmas decorations still up in the crib scene. But as you know, the Christmas season doesn't end until today. So if you take, haven't taken your decorations down at home, you could do that today. You know, we don't know much about Jesus' early life, his hidden life. Luke's Gospel and Matthew's Gospel tell us a little bit about his infancy. And one scene when he was 12 years old, if you can remember, he stayed back in Jerusalem and Mary and Joseph thought that he was in the caravan and they were a whole day away from Jerusalem and realized that they had lost Jesus. And you can imagine the panic for any of you who are parents losing your child, even a 12, well, maybe especially a 12-year-old. You know, Jesus was uh, kind of a rascal, actually. I mean, he should have known better. As a matter of fact, Mary and Joseph basically scolded him when they found him. You know, I don't think Jesus was an easy child to raise. I think he was a difficult child. Judging from how he was as an adult, Jesus was always challenging authority. He was always coloring outside the lines. He was always pushing the envelope. Well, chances are that's the way he was when he was growing up. And especially Mary and Joseph were amazed at him. They, they, he was a mystery to them. You know, sometimes we think Mary and Joseph, you know, the, the, the holy family, very peaceful family. Well, I don't think so. You know, they didn't have a script. They didn't have a script to follow. I think all of us would love to have a script to follow. But we don't. We have a general idea what today is going to be like or what this next week is going to be like or this next year is going to be like. But we don't really know. And Jesus didn't really know. And yet he knew that he had the first thing he did when he left home, 30 years old, was to go down to the Jordan to be baptized by Jesus by John. But we have to ask ourselves, well, why did Jesus have to be baptized? You know, if we see baptism as a cleansing, a cleansing of sin, a purification, Jesus didn't need that. But baptism is more than a cleansing. It's a missioning. It's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit who will lead us and teach us as we go and help us create the script. And it's also an affirmation. When we baptize Sophia, it's the community's affirmation of her. It's the church's affirmation of her. It's God's affirmation of her. And Jesus was affirmed in his baptism. And he was sent out from there. As a matter of fact, the next scene is his going out into the desert for 40 days and being tempted and learning discernment. We all need to renew our baptisms. Now, most of us, I think, were baptized when we were infants. Maybe some of you we're baptized as adults, but most of us were baptized as infants. So we really don't know what's going on. And that's why the parents and the godparents are so important, because they represent the child. They're witnesses. They're the ones who will be nourishing and nurturing Sophia. But you know, when we're baptized, it's, it's almost like taking a, 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 a time release pill. It doesn't all happen at once. Maybe it happens later, 10 years, 20, 30 years later. We have a release of the Holy Spirit or a baptism in the Holy Spirit. And often it comes at very critical times in our lives. 
times that we don't expect, times when we really need guidance and we really need to offer ourselves to God and be open to the Holy Spirit. And another thing, there's no ex expiration date on the baptism. So you don't have to worry, no matter how old you are, it's not too late. It's not too late to renew your baptism, to go down deep into the water. You know, the Jordan, the Jordan was not such a beautiful, clear, clean river. Matter of fact, when I was in the Holy Land, four of us had a chance to renew our baptism in the Jordan River. And we would uh, put on these white gowns and go in deep. Some of you have probably done this. And go up to your waist and then go down. But you know, it's not, you know, they're little fish and seaweed. It's kind of like the Puyallup River, actually. <laughs> it's not that great. But Jesus didn't need a beauty. Jesus didn't need the Columbia River. Just the Jordan would do. Jesus identified with us in our ordinariness, our messiness. He wanted to be with us. And so when we baptize Sophia, let each of us be willing to renew our baptism, to offer ourselves again, to receive God's love and affirmation and guidance so that we too can create this script and know where God is leading us and what the next step is. So take a moment and, and examine your own heart. Where do you need to be baptized? What do you need to let go of and to let God in and the Holy Spirit to guide you?